Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another first 20 turn legendary difficulty guide for a faction within Total War Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires. This time I'm covering the Barrow Legion, which is commanded by Heinrich Kemmler. Now before we get started on the actual guide, I want to let you guys know that this is, an act this is a sponsored video. Uh, so we've been sponsored by NordVPN today. You guys can get 70% off NordVPN for only $3.49 a month. Plus, you can get two additional months for free if you just check out the link in the description below and use the code LEGEND, which is case sensitive, so make sure you type it in correctly, to get yourself that promotion deal. Now, many of you have heard what happened to Major Kill recently, getting your account hacked, and I believe Astarte still has his account hacked. Um, imagine if they had a, just a little bit of extra internet security. So if internet security and privacy is a bit of a concern for you, Check out NordVPN. I will also leave some additional information in the description below so you can essentially do your own research and decide whether or not a VPN is right for you. With that being said, let's jump in now to the guide. Okay, so here we are on turn one in a Barrow Legion Legendary Difficulty Immortal Empires campaign. And just like in the other guides, we need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the vampire accounts before we do anything. Our biggest strength is our magic. The vampires have the strongest law of magic in the game, the law of vampires, and you absolutely want all of your armies to make maximum use out of it. No other law of magic is as powerful as the law of, ma of, of vampires. Now, our weaknesses are that our units are trash, but it also can be used as a strength. If you use the trashiest of your units, the skeletons, and not so much the zombies, they're, they're the worst, but uh, if you use the skeletons, you can actually make them free upkeep. And so, rather than having one doom stack, having like lots and lots of terror guys in an army that's very expensive, for example, what you could end up having is loads and loads of skeleton spams that are mostly focused around utilizing magic. And that's probably the strongest way to go. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this particular campaign. It is very, very cheesy. Don't get me wrong. If you're someone that has an aversion to cheese, the vampire accounts in this particular guide is not for you. I am not going to show you the honorable way to do this. We are going to be basically piling bonuses after bonuses after bonuses and having the enemy fall into trap after trap after trap. That's the that's the true way to play as the uh, the vampire accounts, in my opinion. All right. So first thing we got to do is uh, have a look at our heroes. So if we go to the necromancers here. We can see that we've get we get three available with various different traits: dread incarnate, knowledgeable, disciplined. Now, knowledgeable and disciplined are the traits that you want to get. It's not going to make a huge difference at, difference at this point of the campaign, but if you solely only recruit disciplined and knowledgeable ones, you can end up racking up a lot of extra wins of magic with knowledgeable and disciplined ones can really help uh, keep your uh, army in line two extra melee attack and leadership for all of your units is very helpful especially considering melee attack is very useful for an all melee army and leadership is particularly useful because these guys have low leadership so we'll recruit both of them right off the bat i won't be able to attach them to 200 kemler's army but i'll do so next turn now the next thing we have to keep in mind is that the game will sometimes align you up seemingly obvious pathway that it wants you to go and it can be a trap oh look you start off at war with artois and it's the only enemy that we have and they're significantly weaker than us well obviously we should attack them yes and no yes you should attack them but no you shouldn't continue to attack them it's a trap okay what you need to be taking out right away is actually karak ziflin because for one thing it's occupying a region in your province and if you don't get rid of them early they could end up being a really big threat dwarves are not fun for the vampires to deal with due to their resistance to magic now you can of course get around it due to the fact that they are still very susceptible to winds of death but also dwarves can recruit things such as grudge throwers iron drakes anything that'll make your units basically just melt away so taking them out early is very important so what we want to be doing Straight away is raising the dead. Just get skeletons. Not a big fan of zombies. Shouldn't need them. And then making an attack on Jisa Road. Now, we're not going to occupy the settlement. We are just going to sack it. Not interested in occupying it because we won't be able to hold it. Now, as I said before, this is going to be very heavy in the cheese department. Okay, so if you do have an aversion for it, you know, look away now before you're blinded by it. 
we are going to be using blobs. Now, in this particular battle here, it's not going to seem like our magic's very good. Because we've only got really one spell that we'll, that we'll use, and it's hasn't got any points into it. Level 100, Kemla, not so powerful. But as we continue on this guy, you'll start to see magic become more and more powerful and start to get ridiculously useful. Now, the, uh, the, uh, the blob has two major weaknesses, which is magic and artillery. If the enemy has either of those, be very careful about going into a blob. So check to see if they've got artillery, depending on the artillery. Like, if it's bolt throwers, you probably don't need to worry too much. But if it's things such as... Um, Hellstorm rocket batteries, cannons, uh, trebuchets, anything that, that when the shots hit, they do kill a large number of blobbed up units. You want to be very careful about going into a blob. Sometimes sometimes you might want to avoid it. But at the early stage of the campaign, you shouldn't be going up against anything that has that kind of stuff. Um, if they do have magic, it'll likely not have air of effect magic, so you don't have to worry about too much. Like if you go up against something with Spirit Leech, nothing to be concerned about. It's basically... Anything that can do damage to the whole group of units here, you've got to avoid that. Anyway, what we want to be doing here is just going right down the blob. Now, the strength of the blob is that it allows the battle to go on for as long as possible because you want to be able to utilize all of your Winds of Magic. Now, Winds of Magic takes time to generate, and unless you just basically go over to them and just Wind of Death them all straight away, which is not going to happen, we don't have Wind of Death yet, um, we want to be able to heal these guys in regular intervals, and it just takes time to generate the Winds of Magic and also for the spell to recover. So what we want to be doing here is uh, just getting into combat with some of their melee units. Not worry too much of their Peasant Bowmen shooting at us. Once... Once the melee's begun, they'll focus less on defending their archers from our cavalry. In the meantime, we just do feign attacks, just to, just to basically stop them from shooting us. But don't worry too much if they shoot. Another good thing about the blob is that it keeps it, your damage evenly spread out. And it is better in the campaign to take more casualties, but spread out evenly amongst your units, than to have like two units get completely wiped out, and the rest of your units take no damage. So, numbers... Numbers in terms of casualties really don't matter that much. It's, it's, you gotta look a bit beyond that. So that's okay, let them surround us. Let them do it, it's fine. Okay, the fight begins, and then we can summon Krill. Still no good opportunities to charge in there. Just keep probing them. They'll eventually keep sending more guys over here. And you'll get your opportunity. So yeah, as you guys take damage, you heck them. Best to avoid the Spearmen at Arms, even with your Hex Wraiths, even though they probably could beat them in melee. You want to be walking out of this with essentially no damage, so just, just be mindful of that. So the thing is, it's pretty much going to be a battle every single turn, so you need to be in as good shape as possible. you got to think beyond the one battle that you're fighting. about Krell, he degrades over time anyway, so if he gets wrecked, mm, whatever. Still get him next battle anyway. Main focus here, of course, to be trying to take out their archers. Now, once they've broken, let the uh, let the direwolves run them down. They're better at it than the hex wraiths, and also the direwolves aren't quite as good at breaking enemy units like hex wraiths are. Don't really want to be using Van Dance's Van Hell's Dance Macabre. We, we don't just don't need it. It's a waste of winds of magic. All right, that's their archers dealt with. That's the worst of it. Of See, like I said, it takes time with between each and the heck. 
Gotta let the battle go on sort of as long as possible. Just take whatever freebies you can get. Now, we don't want the direwolves taking too much damage. Whilst they, they could do some damage here, their job is just run down units that are that are broken. That's their only job. They'll probably receive the army loss penalty soon. And we've taken next to no damage. That's what you want to be doing. Don't want your army looking like it's in bits and pieces. That's not a good idea. We don't have to end the battle here. This is, this is the great thing about the vampire accounts. Is that we can still continue to recover the damage that we've taken. But we have to make sure these guys don't leave the battlefield just yet. So, because we're fairly close to their edge of the map. Let's just herd them so they keep running down in this direction here. So we can use up the last of our winds of magic. Cool. A little bit of loot. But the main reason why we came here and sacked this was for the experience. It's so important for the vampire accounts. It's more important than money. Money's good as well though. So just going to sack it. We're not going to occupy it. It's not worth it. It's only a level 1 settlement, it's not worth shit. Then we're going to make our way back to Blackstone Post. Good, we'll recover in one turn. Now here's the thing about Karak Ziflin. They start off at war with Bastogne. And they pretty much, every single time, they blow up Montfort. That's usually what happens. Not always, but that's usually what they do. And so they're not going to be in amazing shape after they do that. So that's why this is the best turn to, to get ready to attack them. So we can recruit some more troops. Let's get some skeleton spears and uh, raise some more of the dead because this will be a little bit more difficult than the previous one. So we want to make sure we've got more troops. Now, in terms of this, we should probably have him... Um, like, we definitely need Wind of Death. And if we go straight for it with Heinrich Kemmler, we can get there first uh, before the Necromancers. But... We kind of need him to do other things as well. So there's Lord of the Scourge. That's very important. And you've got the Restless Dead here. He does need the extra campaign movement range. He does need to improve Krell. First thing we should probably do though is get that campaign movement range. Very important. And these guys over here put some points into Invocation of the Heck. And that way they can overcast it. Making it slightly more efficient. As for the building here. Uh, just go with the gibbet. Oh we are... Just about out of money. Um, okay, look. We don't desperately need this additional troop here. So I'm going to hold off on that. Probably shouldn't have raised the dead. Um, I thought we'd have enough money. But that's okay. Actually, you know what? Let me just see if I can just get a tiny little payment out of... Yeah, I didn't think that would work. But we just we can try. We can try. Sometimes it works. There we go. That's all I needed. Thank you very much. And now we can afford the gibbet. Cool. Then we want to be researching towards Defiler of the Ancient Barrows. It takes 18 turns to get there. It makes all skeleton warriors completely free. This is the most overpowered thing in the, uh, the vampire account roster, really. Uh, even though skeleton warriors aren't particularly good... By making them completely free, you can have armies that only cost like several hundred dark magic and therefore get way more of them. Alright, turn two. Attach these guys to the army. It's mainly just to level them up. You want to keep the disciplined one in your army at all times, but the knowledgeable one... Is that this one? No. Uh, this one here, eventually, he'll be a little bit redundant. Probably best to just have him hanging around, just provide extra winds of magic. Now, as for them, we could try to negotiate with Bastogne to uh, give us some money to declare war on them, but they probably won't. So they didn't end up blowing up that settlement. Hard to know if they went down here and sacked it. They might have. See how there's provincial instability there? They probably did sack it. That means the army's probably still there. That's okay. And we make it down here. And yeah, we can still see they're here. Alright, that's going to make things slightly more difficult. I was hoping they would blow the settlement up, but that's okay. We can still deal with it because we got blobs and you can't beat my blobs, bitch. Alright. Now, in this particular scenario here, it might be best for us to attack this dude here so that we can snipe him with the Hex Wraith before the enemy reinforcements get there. And also, we'll get two battles out of it, which is even better. So the bounce power is probably going to say, like, nowhere near in our favor. Well, 
It's not quite in our favor. We'd lose this auto resolve, so they're a little bit damaged. But in all honesty, there's nothing here to be too concerned about. Get right in their face and have the hex rays take out take out that dude. Guess I wanna try and get over there and save the general. Fine by me. They won't get there in time. Alright. I might just pull them back there. They just they just didn't manage to kill him. But that's okay. We can, might be able to use this to an even better advantage. Because if we kill him right now, before while the fight's not going in, they'll take that minus 16 leadership penalty, but it's only temporary, then it goes down to minus 10. If we kill him, you know, in a few minutes, then we'll get the minus 16 on them when we actually need it. Alright, I need to reform the blob. But let's also get some heals down on the most damaged units. So in terms of balance of power, they probably had the advantage to begin with, but now we've got the advantage. Based on that, they've only got one missile unit left, the Thunderous, so our hex rays should have no problem dealing with that. And then the rest of them are just basic infantry, which if we just manage to cycle charge them, they'll eventually they'll eventually fall to pieces. Especially considering we'll just keep healing. Plenty of winds of well, not plenty, but we've got some winds of magic left. All right, Krell, needs you to kill this dude. Now's the time. You stay there. If he's broken, that's good enough. I'll have the Diablos finish him off. Gotta get rid of those gunners. This one here's taking a lot of damage. I'll move it back and I'll give him a overcasted heck in a bit. Same thing with you. Move them back over here. And the damaged ones have sort of like a pit stop where they go and get some heals. We really need to be cycle charging more into these dwarf warriors. There we are. We are taking some damage. Been trying to get rid of these gunners, but they just they keep moving around. Alright, now we've pretty much used up all of our magic. So now we need to just hope and win this battle. Would really help if we had more winds of magic, and as the campaign progresses, we will get that winds of magic. But we've done enough to ensure that we will win the battle. Alright, not really great selections with any of these, so I'll go with the extra leadership. And even though they're on Force March, if they're garrisoned, they don't get wiped out. Shield of Tullus is actually very good there. Let's level them up. What do we need? I'm going to go with improving uh, Krell so that he lasts twice as long. And finish the job. It still needs to be fought manually, but it's a no-brain easy win. Could sack and occupy it, but I don't want a revolt to occur here. This is not the campaign where we want to be farming revolts. Um, so I'm just going to occupy it. And that gives us a cemetery here. Now, we don't actually have access to recruiting skeleton warriors through here at the moment. It's just the, uh, the skeleton spearmen. So I'll keep that building just for the turn, just so that I can recruit regular skeleton warriors. Because we've got, we've got enough skeleton spears at the moment, and the skeleton warriors are better against infantry, and they are just... They're just a bit cheaper. But next turn, that's that's going. As for leveling up, probably want to give him Master of the Dead. That'd be very useful just to have that passive regeneration. But these guys over here, which one's this? So Disciplined One, I want this to be heading towards Wind of Death. This is our Wind of Death dude. So we need four points into here. So basically, level three, level three, four, five, six... 7, and then at level 8, we should be able to get Wind of Death. This guy here, however, we only need one guy to have Wind of Death, so what I'll do is put a point into Invocation of Nehek here. That way he can cast Overcasted Nehek slightly cheaper than the other guy. And also cast the regular Nehek a little bit cheaper as well. Okay, with that... Next thing we'll need to be doing is coming back over to Gisero, to Artois, and sacking it as much as possible. We don't necessarily want to occupy it. There may indeed be a revolt here at some point. So we need to sort of gauge how things are going to turn out here. All right, let's move on. If they had blown up uh, Montfort, that army would have still remained here and would have attacked you over the end turn. But not, and honestly, if they blow up Montfort, it's actually a lot easier than what we had to deal with. I had to be very careful on that attack there. But overall, either way, it's it's not difficult to take out Karak Ziflin as long as you do it quickly. It was not important at all that we capture 
capture this because it's actually better to let them build up this province a little bit more before they take it. Let's focus on experience, far more valuable. Another thing as well is of course accumulating blood kisses. We got one from defeating their faction leader here, let's try and get another one from Jisero. Now they're going to start to recruit really soon so we need to get back over there and attack them. Now we can reach them from Blackstone Post, so let's stand here. And we don't need this anymore. Get rid of it. Let us make. And just grab one more skeleton spearman. Actually, no. Get rid of the zombie. And we'll recruit two skeleton spearmen. Because there's... You could go down here to get free zombies, but honestly, you just bypass it. Zombie spam is not ideal. I mean, they... If it's the same price as the skeleton warriors, it's only a few extra turns to get there. Just, it's not worth it. Getting zombies. They're just too trashy. Alright, turn four, and we need to resume our attacks against Jisero. Now, we don't know what's standing there. We, we can tell that an army is in encamp stance right outside the settlement. It's probably just, like, one general. If we have a look at its public order, we can get an idea of how many troops are actually sitting there. So the military presence through public order is three. Now, because there is two regions in that province, you basically just divide it by, or essentially multiply it by two, that means they have six or seven units. Now, it could be that that's one standing outside the settlement there is a full stack, but we saw them two turns ago, and it was only a few units. It's unlikely it's a full stack, so let's make the attack. Probably be best we just cautiously move down there and have a look. So it's six and, like I said, six. So 12 units in here, plus eight units in there. It's a sizable force, but as long as we blob cheese them, it should be fine. There's no cavalry, so there's nothing to be too concerned about. The archers, one, two, three, four, five, no problem. The, in the melee infantry don't matter at all, and our magic is a little bit better. Now, one thing that's happened that isn't particularly good is that the region is a little bit weak in, mag in uh, magic at the moment. It's okay. But you, it's important to keep checking how much Winds of Magic is this, because this is basically how, uh, how it's like a multiplier of our strength. The more Winds of Magic we have, the better we are. The less Winds of Magic, the weaker we are. But anyway, we should be fine with this. Now, we might not be able to make it back to our, our uh, to back to Blackstone Post at the end of this battle here. So it's important, once again, that we take minimal casualties. Best way to do that. Blob. They don't have any area effect damage, they don't have any magic, no artillery. There is literally no downside to the Blob. It's not not the best at moving the Blob, but it's okay. They'll they'll eventually form up into and have re reasonable spacing between them. It'll be okay. Gotta get at those archers. It would be so much better to get them before they've used up their ammo, but I can't get at them and I'm not gonna break the, uh, the Blob. I'm going to feign some charges in here to try to get them out. Alright, I think now we're about to get into the, the main fight. This is what we wanted. For them to commit all of their forces at us. Okay, their generals are fighting now. And this is where we want Krell in. Krell's a good duelist, we want him to be taking out their generals. It's not quite as blobby as I'd like it to be. Well, the blob's a bit too big, I mean. There we go. Good. So that's really... It might give us like a close or even Pyrrhic victory, probably close, but really that's a perfect result because we'll st we'll we'll get back up to full strength without too much time, and no units got wiped out, so I don't need to recruit anything new. Everyone gets to retain their experience, and uh, we'll we'll continue to build back up. They're not we're not going to give them a chance to recover now that we've dealt with Karak Ziflin. Decent amount of loot money, but once again, just sack the city. So that's alright. I might actually give that to this dude here. Because I don't really use uh, 100 Kemler's abilities at the moment. And let's improve Krell a bit more. So next one can be done at rank 6. Cool. We don't need to rush Lightning Strike with the Vampire Counts. You can do it if you want. It's just that since you usually swarm with loads of armies... Lightning Strike actually kind of weakens you in that situation. Alright, we can force march back to Blackstone Post, and that would give us the most amount of replenishment. We'll just come back here again next turn to sack it. He may or may not be sitting there, that doesn't matter. 
But it should be easier next time to snack it. So we get a small degree of replenishment. All the amount that we really need, though. Okay, over here, let's get... Hmm... Well, some money would be nice. A charnel pit's really good as well, because we can increase the capacity of Necromancers once it gets to tier 3. Get some extra growth coming in. Get some extra local recruitment capacity. And, uh, yeah, increase the ranks of uh, all Necromancers that we recruit. So I'm going to pop that down. But it can be a very expensive building. Uh, there's also that as well, but I'm not, not too concerned about money at the moment. I know we're not making very much, but we don't need to be spending on anything right now. And as long as we keep sacking that, it'll be fine. Anyway, as soon as this tech is done... Will most of this upkeep cost here will just go away. But we really do need some growth coming in. It's going very slowly. So they've got a military presence of three. They probably moved their army over there. Probably started to recruit, but I don't, don't think he's finished anything. And then we'll just go back over there. Oh no, they, uh, they took him all the way back to Artois. That's actually not ideal, because it would have been better to finish him off. Um, not the end of the world. So... We, once again, should fight this battle manually, just because I, I can't really risk taking excessive damage. If I fight it manually, I'll probably end up taking no damage, but at the same time, there's nothing too exciting about this fight. Easy battle, only lost seven. And once again, just sacking it. It's not about the money, it's just about keeping them in the dirt. Also, the more we uh, defeat their, their faction leader, the more we can get some blood kisses going. Now, another thing that we could do in order to try and level up these necromancers a bit faster is to have them do agent actions. But there's only a 52% chance of success. And I have a notoriously uh, bad uh, history with getting constant critical uh, failures. So I'm just going to continue leveling up this way. It's the safer way. But if you want to use that to get uh, some extra technology, you certainly can do that. I'm going to play it safe, though. Because if they get a critical failure, we're not going to be able to use them for quite some time. I just can't risk it. So this time, though, I think what I'll do is actually put them here. Because they'll still be able to heal. No, I'll take them all the way back to Blackstone Post. That's fine. I'll keep them there. That way we're providing public order. Because like I said, I don't, I don't want this province here to revolt. Okay, so they've just offered me a peace treaty. So this is something that we can do. Because what would actually be a better province for us to take would actually be um, Bastogne over here. And Bohemond's already sitting in there waiting for us to attack him. But what I'm going to do here is decline. We can always offer it again next turn. So he just moved out of the way. Okay, let's just keep going with Artois for the time being. It, uh, Bastogne will probably be a little bit more difficult to take on than Artois. Because they've had more time to build up. Because they, they put some growth into the settlement which got destroyed. So good, that's improving our, our skeletons. 13 turns, we'll get that. So we're currently on turn 6. It doesn't matter too much about expanding a lot. Some, some people, I find, what they do is they just, they think, oh, i got to expand as much as possible. No. Especially with the vampire counts, don't worry about it. Most of these settlements just can't really make us any money at this point here. Focus on the province that you've got. It would be nice to get Grung's Zint, but it's very difficult to get there. This is an annoying province here to, to fully consolidate. This was what we've got here. It's absolutely fine. Just slowly grow it. We've got 50 growth coming in per turn. We're not making much money, but it's okay. The most important thing is to be leveling up the heroes. That is absolutely critical. Alright, now we're at full strength. We can justify just auto-resolving this. We don't need to fight this manually. So obviously, far worse result than what I would have received. But we're still going to recover in a single turn. Eventually, they're going to bring a full stack down here to, to park their ass in the settlement. And that's going to require our full attention. But he's only going to be like a level 1 dude. And hopefully only bring basic units. Uh, whereas we're slowly getting stronger and stronger. So they've got 10 units in total in the province. The fact that this one here was recruiting is taking up recruit slots, slowing down the other army. Now we could occupy this, press the attack and actually take Artois. But it's just not that valuable. It's far more valuable for us to be continuously leveling up Heinrich Hemmler. Let them build up the province. Let them put in the money. At level 1, level 2 settlements, it just ain't worth shit. So really, the first 10 turns is probably... Well, the first 3 turns was pretty exciting, but now, up until turn 10, it's probably going to be a bit dull. But you just got to go through the motions. Don't ever get stuck in the idea that you have to do something exciting. Sometimes a few turns will go by where you're just doing 
just this grindy shit right here because it's important to get them leveled up and occupying it just isn't worth anything so you don't need to expand Grung has been blown up it would be good for us to take it but I just can't really justify getting there right now if I recruit another general we'll we'll have uh, negative income which wouldn't be good all right good they actually brought a uh, this bitch over here so that's going to weaken them so that whatever they've got left is probably weaker than what we've got here we are probably not going to get to rank 8 with this battle here but I am going to occupy it looks like I have to fight it manually but there's nothing to be concerned about here if I order resolve this too many units will get nuked there's very little I'm going to be able to do to catch those uh, mounted yeomen and they're going to be particularly effective against my hex race. I could just charge at them, but it's just not going to work because they're just going to be able to keep shooting me. Am I going to catch them? Oh, I kind of did. But they're actually doing more damage to me than I'm doing to them. So it's just not worth it. Just come back here. Just let them shoot into my skeletons. Okay, they're closer to us, so that's actually fine. I'll attack them there. And then just pop in in the heck. Oh, did she, did she use magic on us? Oh, shit. This is what I was saying before. Watch out for wind blast. Okay, spread out. Air of effect magic. I didn't think she would have it. But I guess so. It's okay. Luckily, this battle here is not, like, super dangerous. So, we don't have to be in a blob. Ooh, those that wind blast will do a lot of damage to us. So yeah, blob's not effective in this particular situation. All right, I really need Krill to take her out. You know, show her a good time. In hell. Go kill her. Once she's dead, we can go back into the blob. He took her out really quickly. Don't have lots of winds of magic. I don't think overcasting would necessarily be a good idea. Um, they took a lot of damage, but not so many casualties. I'll just keep them close to Heinrich Kemmler. They'll get some passive healing in, and then I'll just heal them at the end of the battle. And that's won us the battle. Okay, cool. While they're running away, we gotta get some heals in, because we could get attacked over the end turn. It's, it's unlikely, but it, it doesn't hurt to be, uh, to be prepared. How many Saving Your Disaster campaigns have I done? where they've t captured a settlement and then got attacked over the end turn and their army's, you know, in terrible shape. And they go, oh, I don't know, I didn't think this would happen. Well, it doesn't matter if you don't think it's going to happen. Prepare for these things. Prepare for the worst case scenario. Always assume you're going to be attacked over the end turn. So not quite leveled up to eight. So we need to get one more fight in before we can attack Castle Artois. But I've got one more thing in mind. I'm going to basically stand here, go into ambush stance, wait for them to attack here, and I'll just catch them. So, in order to improve our chances on that, that's why we're going with Ancient Cunning. Because we want to be able to actually get the ambush done. Not super important if we if we fail. But, you know, it's, it's what we want. Alright, all of this looks fine. It's very tempting to come over here. Uh, actually, look at my strength ranking. Based on this, they're they're unlikely to attack us. We don't need this. Alright, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to grab a general. Let's have a look and see... Okay, there's a knowledgeable dude here. So, his effects will apply even after he's been disbanded. And uh, we've just managed to manage, um, maintain finances. I'm going to force march him around over here and try and occupy this before... Bretonia or Marienburg do. Chances are they'll get there first, but I'll just see if I can do it. So the Empire has gone and occupied it. Kind of knew something like that would happen, but that's no big deal. At least we get to keep his trait, and uh, we'll get our money back. So, somebody is raiding our territory. Bastogne. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Probably wouldn't worry about that right now. It's unlikely they'll attack us, because they've got other enemies to be concerned about. But it is still possible that they will. So, it's basically just fingers crossed on that mark there, because we've got other things to do over here. Alright. 
So, they're not recruiting anything at the moment. How close are we to... Yep, we're getting close to it. Alright, so we want to go into Ambush Stance. Let's see here. 86%, 86%. Let's try and stay as far away from... I'm not sure which ones I need to stay away from. I'll just try and stay there. That way I'm kind of in the middle between them. Hopefully they don't detect me. Because increasing our um, ambush success chance doesn't actually increase our chance of being detected. The closer we are to heroes or other armies, the more likely we are to be discovered. So it's kind of unfortunate that this dude's here. But it is what it is. Now, they've got an army sitting at Grung Zint. Chances are they'll have to move at some point. And due to the fact that we've got so much corruption here, they'll um, probably revolt and get blown up again. But it's hard to say. Alright, everything looks okay. Let's just hope they don't declare war. And let's move on. So, luckily for us, they took the bait and the ambush has been sprung. This will be enough to get us to rank 8 with our, our hero here. And we'll have, we're doing some damage to them prior to the actual assault on uh, Artois. So this worked out very nicely. So there was only a 14% chance that this was going to fail. Alright, so what are we up against here? Uh, nothing particularly dangerous. Probably not a good idea to auto resolve it. Units are getting nuked. And looking at this, the region is weak of magic, but that's okay. So you can see here, you see how the character's plus 10? That's because we've got two knowledgeable dudes. One in the army and one out of the army, the necromancer that we recruited. And you can give individual attack orders afterwards. We really want to make sure these guys don't escape the, uh, the pincer. Really won't Krill to fight him, but because he doesn't have, like, as much mass as a horse, can't quite get him in there, he just can't push through. Okay, looks like the army loss penalty is being inflicted. We need to make sure we run down as many of them as possible, because uh, they don't automatically get wiped out. They weren't on Force March. Looks like we got him. Good, good, good. We'll get a blood kiss from that, because he is a faction leader. Decent amount of money gained. Yeah, we should still be able to replenish the full even if we do that. And with that army in force march, if we attack it, if we're standing outside the settlement, not only will we wipe it out, but we'll draw out the garrison, weaken it, and then we can attack it straight afterwards. Because we don't have any um don't have any siege attackers. And we don't have anyone that can damage the wall, so we we have to besiege it. Wind of death. There we go, now we're talking. Could have gotten earlier, but I decided to go for it with the Necromancer. You can if you want to do it with Krell, you uh with Krell. With uh, Heinrich Kemmel, you can do it a lot earlier. However, we've now got permanent Krell. Also, I didn't build anything here, because I didn't know if I was going to hold on to it. Now I kind of know I'm going to hold on to it, so... Just wondering if I should get this. We don't have any trade partners, so it still might be better off getting the gibbet. But I think I'll go with channel pit, because we, we will want to grow this as fast as possible. And again, we barely got any money, so... Let's go with that. Public order here is still shit, but it is what it is. Alright, let's have a look at the situation over there. So yeah, we're at full strength. Ah, oh, they put the dude inside the settlement. I thought they had somebody else there. Alright, we've also got a blood kiss. So we can awaken someone. Let's have a look at the different ones we can get. Reduced upkeep for all heroes, probably not super important right now. Casualty replenishment rate certainly is good. Access to Sylvanian crossbowmen, eh, I'm not fussed about those units. Public order plus five, very important for legendary difficulty. Um, Sylvanian handgunners, again, not important. Weapon strength for cavalry unit, don't need it. No, don't need it right now. Immune to untainted attrition will help us lay down the track, but don't need it right now. Uh, research rate plus 25% will help, not essential right now. Starting amount, not essential. 
Uh, reduced upkeep for all units, plus 10%. Uh, that's really good. Um, ambush success chance, that's very good. Vampire corruption, also good. Alright, I'm still going to go with the Von Karstein gifts, because that casualty replenishment rate is super good. And that also means you just don't have to put the points into Undying Ward. Alright. Now, if you have a look at their strength ranking, we are significantly stronger than them. They're rank 3 here, which means when we capture it, it'll be at rank 2. But, I don't have any siege attackers, like I said. I was hoping to uh, draw them out. But, we can't do that. So we'll have to just make an assault. Best do it whatever it takes one turn. If I go with this, then we have to besiege it for two turns. I don't want to do that. I wouldn't hurry up with this. Because this is going to revolt in... This is going to revolt soon. Now for this. This will be quite difficult. The vampire accounts with this particular army is not really adept at uh, assaulting settlements. The only real concern, though, is the archers. They've only got three of them. It's not that big of a deal. The tricky here is, once again, just don't panic. Okay, It doesn't matter if we're getting shot. We have regeneration. It'll be okay. What we want to do, have the ram take down the gate. Could have units taking down the gate or heroes doing it, but the problem with that is sometimes they open up the gate and then your unit gets stuck on the other side and it's just, this is no way to get them out. The ram will get there later than everyone else, but it is what it is. Stay in a blob. Stay within uh, Heinrich Kemmler. That way, at least if they take damage, they'll get a little bit of healing. But we've got to wait for the ram to get there. If we stand here, we should be out of range of both of these towers. Yep. So only we'll only be taking damage from their archers. Just got to suck it up. Okay, so that unit there, really not a good idea for it to get shot. Just stand over here for now. Say, same with that. Same with that. There. At least the other units have shields, but I don't know where else to put them. And if you're wondering, why not put units up on the wall to keep these guys tied down? Eh, any units that we put on the wall are probably going to get annihilated. We don't need to do that. What I would like to do is kill them. Now, this is just a regular Wind of Death. Overcast it is way better, but this still does reasonably well. And they're almost out of ammo anyway, so not a huge concern. Okay, that's done. And you guys, in you go. Now, this isn't the fastest way to do it, and if we attack the walls, we probably would still be able to win. But it's not just about that, it's about making sure that our army stays intact, so we don't have to keep recruiting new units. Problem is, doing this when you put that many units through the walls, eh, you could lose some frames. So, I think I will actually put some guys up on the wall. If they're not putting melee units up there, we should actually be fine to go up and fight them. Another reason for this as well, is that if you can get a big blob going on here, Wind of Death. That's what it's there for. Alright, time to use the magic. I could wait, so that we can generate more of it, but honestly, this is such a good spot to use Wind of Death right now. Might hit a little bit of our own units, but we're going to do way more damage to them. That was, yeah, that was the best one so far. There we go. And now we pour into them. Into the city and kill them. Good, good, good. And that's, you know, it's why you need Wind of Death. You know, it's, it's not the best spell in the game for no reason. Okay, probably best to loot and occupy, not to sack it. It's going to revolt no matter what. So we might as well make some money out of it. And that should be the end of Artois, I believe. Unless they've... Let me just check. They must just have like a small force somewhere hanging around doing nothing. Like just a single general. Nothing to be too concerned about. They'll show up when they show up. Um, okay. Don't need this. Oh, hang on. We can get ourselves a White King. White Kings are very useful. Let's see here. I usually don't put White Kings inside of my armies. I used to, but I just found that they just didn't really do enough. Even disciplined ones. Uh, the one that I want is the one that actually increases the chance of... Um, 
of success chances for agents because what you want this guy doing is assassinating so you get more more um uh what's it called some more uh, blood kisses but also to be assaulting enemy garrisons and armies to to softening them up so i think we'll just go with lawkeeper that way you can reduce construction costs in the region that he's in so they'll come down here and they'll they'll besiege the settlements we're not going to get any replenishment over the intern but it's nothing to be concerned about um, with that done, I'm going to get, get rid of this. We can rebuild it later. And we, we've got our first consolidated problems. Now, public order here is terrible, but we'll get rid of the revolts. It's not going to be a problem. Let's see, what do we need here? Probably want to go with foster terror, get that growth in there, and really, really spread that corruption. First thing we'll probably want to build here is, is this, so that we can start spreading it into nearby regions. All right, here we are, turn 16, and it's basically just clean up time from here. So, it's pretty fortunate to have this situation here. If everything goes well, we might be able to get four battles in this turn, which is a lot of experience for our dudes here. The downside to what happened here is uh, they besieged the settlement, so we didn't get any replenishment. Now, one way around this is they could have had uh, Heinrich Kemmler stand outside the settlement and just had a regular general stand in there, but that would have uh, increased our upkeep cost by 15%. At the end of the day, we didn't take that much damage in the previous assault, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And uh, certainly going to need that money. That's good. No serious damage done there. And a bartered nightmare would be good for Heinrich Kemmler. Would be good to have him move around a bit. Okay, and Wind of Death, yep, we want some points into that, and over here we want you to be heading, probably, probably for this one here, I want to get Magical Reserves, that way it'll support the dude for Wind of Death a little bit more, because we don't need two guys to be able to cast it, don't need that at all. Okay, then finish off Artois once and for all, they shouldn't ever come back except via Revolt, which you should stomp. So that's them done. Helm of Discord, that's good. Especially for blobs. Won't be able to make use out of it in this turn, but that's okay. Alright, over here with uh, Heinrich Kemmler. It might be time to actually start working on his magic. And then we got to fight this manually. Could order resolve it, but units would get nuked, so we can't have that. Alright, let's have a look at some of these units here. So when dealing with goblins, you really got to watch out for spinning loons, like big time. Do they? There's just that one there. Now, because of that there, that's, that's a vortex unit spell sort of thing. That means we can't blob up. That could annihilate my blob. And I've been caught by that many times before. You've got to check green skins when it comes down to night goblin units. If they've got spinning loons, either kill that unit straight away or just don't blob. We don't need to blob in this one, just gotta be careful. 27 Winds of Magic at the moment is pretty expensive for Wind of Death Overcasted, but it's worth it. As long as I don't dodge. Oh, that one there kind of dodged it. Still, one and a half units essentially dead there. Like I said, just be careful of... Is that the Spinning Loons dude? Yep, okay. Yep, yeah. avoid, 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 avoid. It's unbelievable how much damage those things can do sometimes. I tried to dodge it, but they just moved too quick. Still, they're not going to get another chance to use it. So now we can actually blob. Now that we've isolated that dude, we can actually blob. Although, there's no real need to. So the main reason what we're trying to do here is so that I don't have to fight this dude next time. I mean, from a distance, he looks exactly like Gandalf. <laughs> Doesn't sound like Gandalf, though. See, we don't get much from Dominate Captives, and so we've, since we've got a really high replenishment rate, just better get the money, because we don't have a whole lot of cash coming in. Across the map. Now, one thing you could do is leave it there and attack it again next turn, so that we can improve the public order here and essentially attack it again and make it run away but I think I'd just rather get rid of it good bit of damage 
but we'll recover. Alright, now we need to do a bit of an overview and see how we're going. We've got four more turns left of the guide, got four regions, and Heinrich Kemmler's at level 15, and his heroes are at level 10. We've got a white king over here, who needs to level up somewhere. Just need to send him somewhere to level up, that's all. That's all he's got to do. And since I said we're probably going to attack Bastogne next, it could also be good to get a bit of intel over there. Alright. I find out of these spells here, probably best to go raise the dead. Because they just I just don't use them, to be honest. Just don't use them. And we just need to put points in to get to Wind of Death. There we go. That'll make it significantly cheaper to cast. And with you, magical reserves. That way we've we've got more winds of magic for you know future battles. Okay, looking at them. So that's probably gonna revolt and get blown up eventually. But I'm not gonna worry about it too much in this guide. We missed our chance to get it in the first place. Alright, it's gonna revolt again here pretty soon. We could try to prevent it, or we could just let it happen. And we need growth. Because in two turns, money is not going to be an issue. Because Let us make all of these units here are going to be free. Now, once that occurs, this unit here and these two probably just disband them. You might think, what? They've, they've been so effective in your army so far. Yes, they have. But wait until you see, well, here's the thing. You get rid of them, and then you hire another army. And... Uh, and then you just recruit lots of skeletons out of it. And you end up still making loads of money. The thing is, with every new army that I recruit, they're going to keep getting more and more expensive, because these are pretty expensive units. Now, I don't know about the Hex Wraith, I might keep that, but I definitely don't need the Cairn Wraith. I know it's a good unit, but this unit will cost 233, and these will cost nothing. And, I don't know, free is free, man, you know. <laughs> so, anyway, that's not for another two turns. Keep it as it is for now. There'll be another revolt here. Not a big deal. We'll just have to wait for that. Probably not going to be expanding any more during the guide. It's just about consolidation. Keep leveling up. Uh, Kemla. And then, you know, maintaining public order once you've sorted out the province. So there's Artois again. Uh, this time they've got artillery, but we don't desperately need to blob up here, so we could just easily charge at them. Uh, situation here, there. We got the decent amount of growth in. Let's let's build up Jisero, get that going. If you're wondering why not repair this stuff, I mean you can. And you actually do make a decent amount of money from settlements, so I guess that's all right to do that. Everything else over here looks solid. Can order resolve this? So you should fight it manually, but I'm just going to order resolve it because we're sort of approaching the end here. They got wiped out. That's not ideal. At the end of the day, we've already got the levels up that these guys really needed, and it's really just about consolidation at this point. So, what I did there is what you shouldn't do. I'm just sort of, I'm just being lazy because we've only got two turns left. Because you can, you can level up twice as fast if you fight it manually. It's just, it's just, you know, time consuming, that's all. Okay, what about you? Is there any heroes you could possibly assassinate? 29% chance I wouldn't bother with that. Salt Garrison and success, that's good. Wasn't a critical failure. And just put points into uh, to specialist. Get him ready to start assassinating so you can get blood kisses. All looks good, and move on to the next turn. We recruit new general. So we've got one of the Von Karstein bloodline, that's fine. Pop him in here. And we start recruiting skeleton spears. You can raise the dead if you want. How much do they cost? So it's a little bit more expensive to do that, but that's it's not that big a deal. And your entire army is not going to go up in cost more than 313. This is why we want to start getting rid of things such as dire wolves. Don't need it. The Cairn Wraiths. Don't need it anymore. I'll keep the Hex Wraith for now. Because it is a very good unit. But yeah, you can see the upkeep cost just becomes super bloody cheap. And rather than go with quality armies that's expensive, you start spamming, like, have four of these armies that just don't cost anything, and you can just swarm them. You are, you're literally throwing just the dead at the enemy, and it just doesn't cost you anything, apart from the recruitment costs. 
And since you've got Wind of Death, you just end up with this massive blob that you just Wind of Death the crap out of them. That's the that's the Doom stack. But it's it's weird though because you can of course go stronger armies, but um, it's actually detrimental to your campaign because you'll have fewer of them. Even if your armies you know essentially lose a battle, um, as long as your heroes don't die, it does it just doesn't matter. So everything's looking fine here. Might save up the money, not not build this one up. Instead, build, yeah, build that up instead. Build that up, up once you've got the money. So good amount of income coming through. You could disband the hex wraith if you want, but that's the most valuable of the units that you start off with, apart from you know skeletons which you want to keep. And there'll be a revolt here which we'll deal with, and it won't be a problem. After that, probably want to start going down this chain here because this is where there's a good amount of like campaign bonuses. But that. Defiler of the Ancient Barrows, that is an absolute must. And yeah, here we are on turn 20. Yeah, definitely going to want to reduce that recruitment cost. And so, you know, have to deal with these rebellions. Could sit in the settlement to reduce the rate at which they rebel, but it's still going to rebel, so you might as well actually do it more often. Again, should have fought that battle manually, but we're just wrapping things up at this point. Because uh, there could have been an extra level in it by that point. Potion of Healing's actually not really that important um, but that it will re rebel again in a few turns but just got to get that um, that vampire corruption up once this is looking like it's only gonna revolt once every five six seven turns then you can start focusing on this right now uh, right after that as for between between now and then just keep recruiting more and more skeleton armies it's not costing anything except for recruitment costs and like still making shitloads of money and you can build up a really really strong army even if it is just full of garbage in your forces because you just need these guys to hold the line especially considering you're going up against Bretonia loads and loads of spearmen are very effective because their best units are going to be spearmen and that's basically how you go about it as for leveling them up I'm pretty sure I've already already covered that wind of death all the way after that you know you don't even really need to go these points you can go with the unliving host if you want to it's just not essential anyway that's the end of this guide hope you found that useful if you do follow it you should have a pretty easy time with any vampire account campaign um, and just realize that this is overpowered really really overpowered free skeletons and wind of death it'll get you right up to like level uh, up to turn 75 turn 100 without any real concern. Only then will you start fighting armies that are even four of your skeleton spams they might struggle up, struggle against, but you should make so much money that you can afford to have the odd Terrorgeist or Vargulf in your army, and your provinces should be built enough, up enough that you can recruit them. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Don't forget to post in the comments below which uh, guide you would like to see next, and I'll see you in the next one. Later, fuckers. <laughs> blob or is it a huge line? Is a blob gonna be effective? I'm not gonna blob. We don't need to blob. I'm not gonna blob. It's not quite as blobby as I'd like it to be. Well, the blob's a bit too big, I mean. Stay in a blob. That means we can't blob up. That could annihilate my blob. Once she's dead, we can go back into the blob. Just the blobs. Not the best at moving the blob, but we don't need to blob in this one. Just don't blob.